What's going on guys? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is August 4th of 2017. So guys, as I make YouTube videos on cryptocurrencies, I've noticed one thing ever since the inception of my channel. A lot of people who view my channel, or those of you who are watching for the first time, are new investors in the cryptocurrency sphere. I mean, there's no doubt to it. This is a massively adopted market, and for its short lifespan, there's a lot of new people coming into the industry. Now, that being said, a lot of the videos I make are for those who are relatively experienced with cryptocurrencies or at least have, you know, walked around the block in the sense of understanding everything. However, I know a lot of you are new to the whole sphere of investing and a lot of you might be worried on how to approach it, at least in a successful manner. Now, I'm not here today to throw you a thousand different coins that you should go out and buy, nor do I do that in general. I usually do reviews on cryptocurrencies to cover the basics of them, but today I'm going to be doing a very generic general topic that is very important, and that is learning how to trade cryptocurrencies. Now, you guys might, if you watch my channel, you might be knowing, Nick, you tell me not to trade, why you tell me to trade? What I mean by trading is not exactly trading cryptocurrencies in a short, uh, short period of time. We're going to be thinking about long-term investing. However, not only do you use a little bit of a trading strategy within investing, I'm going to teach you guys how to use technical analysis and the, pr the primary steps that you're going to need to know to really become a successful investor in cryptocurrencies. So you have to use some trading techniques as well. Investors do it themselves in other traditional markets like equities, meaning stocks. So I feel it's important for you guys to understand this. So anyways, guys, I've been pushing it off for too long. We're going to learn a lot in this video. I really hope you stick around, and I think it's a great video to get your feet wet into cryptocurrency. So let's jump right into it, guys. All right. So the big word here, everyone, is strategize. I'm going to tell you right now that the majority of people who invest in cryptocurrencies do not strategize. They don't understand why they're putting their money into certain coins, and they think that it's just going to be a get-rich-quick scheme. They think that they got it in the bag. They've got you know the the profits are raking in. I don't sell you guys coins like that because I want you to do your own research and be confirmed that you're going to go out and find those coins that you know you're confident in, and I can show you guys all the steps to it. So we're going to go through it. I just want to make sure and emphasize, guys, strategy. Strategy is the big key word here. Okay, so. In the sense of strategizing, what are the main steps to making sure that you've got the right cryptocurrency for the long term? Now, of course, you guys can do this with multiple coins. I recommend diversification. However, I'm showing you all the basic steps to making sure you purchase the right coin and you went through the right steps to make sure it is the right purchase. So the first one is, of course, you know, selecting a coin or token to look at. You know, there's thousands available right now on exchanges across the globe. However, there's a, a very nice premier selection of, I would say, around 50 to 100 to invest in right now with more ICOs coming out day by day. So you've got a huge variety to look into. The second step is where's the price? Where's the price at? Is it cheap to us? Is it at, you know, at all, all new highs or is it at new lows for the 52 week? I mean, this is, this is a really important factor and we're going to get more into how we should really look at this and where we should think about buying. Step three is to check for chart patterns, guys. This is where we're going to get into the technical side of things and really start analyzing price action to benefit us in the sense of gaining valuable insights towards our future possible investments. Step four is to use the indicators. Now, guys, the indicators are extremely important. What's nice is that in crypto markets, seeing as it's relatively new, the very basic indicators, which I'll teach you about today, are very helpful in investing in cryptocurrencies. Whereas in other markets nowadays, you have to use very advanced forms of technical analysis to even keep up with how markets work. So it's definitely, uh, it's very useful to use the basics in cryptocurrency. Like I said, we'll, we'll cover them a little bit later. And then we also want to talk on step five about forming price points. We've got to learn about when we want to buy, if we're going to be buying a coin at a certain price, what's the price we're going to sell it at? Um, if it, you know, what's our target price to sell or what's our target price if things don't go our way? We're going to have a strategy for both approaches, whereas many people just think of the positive. So, and then the last one is follow through. Follow through, guys, and I'm going to emphasize that a lot at the end, but I think you can kind of get the, the, the general meaning of that. So anyways, guys, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So as stated before, step one is selecting your coin or token. So this is selecting the cryptocurrency that you're going to watch um, and are considering to buy. So how do you go about selecting your coin or token? Well, there's a few different things you want to keep in mind. There's three main categories of market valuation that really define cryptocurrencies. Now, a lot of you guys out there might think, 
Oh, okay. Well, this coin is one cent. I should go out and buy it. It's really cheap right now. It could go up to $200. That's highly unlikely because the actual dollar value per coin or you know, if, even if it's just a few cents, doesn't matter in the grand scale of things. It's the market valuation. And how is that calculated? It's by the number of coins or tokens multiplied by its current price. And that's the overall valuation of that. For example, Bitcoin is very big. It's, one, it's the largest cryptocurrency and it's somewhere in the $40 billion range. So very highly valued, seeing as it was the first cryptocurrency and it's widely adopted and known across the world. So. That would be an example, segueing into our topic of value types, that would be a perfect example for our large cap. Now I consider, everyone's got their own definitions, but I personally would consider large caps to be the top five coins in valuation. So you can think of probably off the top of your head if you have a general knowledge of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, uh, Litecoin, Dash, Ethereum, you name it. So those really well-developed coins that have good adoption and are continuing to grow. The second category is mid caps. Now, mid caps have at least in my mind over a $200 million valuation. This averts the risk of getting completely wrecked by uh, whales, as they're called, the people who have the large volume of Bitcoin that can pump and dump certain uh, cryptocurrencies. This gets you out of that risk zone, but also puts you in a more well-defined zone. These coins have pretty decent adoption. They're getting more media coverage. They're advancing on their tech. They usually have good teams. So definitely kind of medium level risk in the sense of investing as you go down the uh, list of valuation you have higher risk uh, and that leads us to our higher risk candidates which are small caps now i recommend you guys do not invest in any small caps that are under uh, 20 million dollars in valuation period if you want my advice uh, the reason being is because down there you are really susceptible to pump and dumpers or the whales as i was telling you earlier and we really want coins that are somewhere around probably the 50 to 200 million dollar range if we're going to do small caps so that's basically coins that are just coming onto the market just getting out there i know one that i'm very optimistic on is mysterium uh, but they're usually very early stage coins that you could go out there and watch maybe consider buying into early on so the second question in selecting your token is now that you've categorized what you know what kind of risk factor you want in the sense of valuation, you've picked a coin maybe in large, mid, or small cap, you have to ask, why are you optimistic? You know, and this is a really fundamental question. This isn't so much technical, but why are you optimistic on this coin? Now, I listed out four major categories that you should always look for when you look at any given coin or token. The first one being target market. What is it aiming to be? You know, for example, I have a few listed out. I have cloud storage, app development, finance, VPNs, and I can tell you some coins that go with those. For example, cloud storage. Uh, Sia coin is an example which has a decentralized blockchain network where you can actually uh, store your information on a multitude of hard drives across the globe and you can pay people through uh, see it with see coin so that's that's an example of uh, knowing the target market of a certain coin and there's tons of different target markets that these coins are going after guys so there's a, a, an abundance of opportunity and blockchain technology is looking really optimistic in this sense second thing is speaking of that the technology the philosophy might be great the target market might be there is the tech there is the team actually making great technology that can not only be easily uh, used but easily downloadable accessible and you know brought to a wide scale so is it actually out there and ready to use the third thing is a solid dev team now guys this is something that has to be left up to interpretation much like the other two factors that we've gone over but this is something to really uh, do your research on you do not want to be investing in a coin that might have a great ambition and might say they're working on some technology but only has two to three developers that's not going to be enough to make a lot of the uh, kind of claims that a lot of these coins are uh, stating they're going to make. So make sure that there's a good experienced team. Make sure there's people who are backing those projects uh, and also make sure that they've got a decent amount of um, attempts at working with partners and uh, reaching out and branching out with a lot of corporate industry partners as well. So. The fourth one, kind of going into the topic of corporate partners, is growing adoption. Are people adopting this coin? Are people using it? This is probably the most extreme and important factor. Now, how do I know that? Because Bitcoin, which has very basic tech and hasn't you know, seen any major updates since we, we just saw a segue, um, it's pretty basic, you know, it's just a coin that transfers over the blockchain pretty much. Uh, however, it has been adopted. It was the first one there. And because of it, it gets a big piece of the cake. So adoption is extremely cover uh, and extremely important in the sense of media coverage, um, 
people actually you know setting demand for it people using the technology in corporate settings so there's a lot of ways to measure adoption guys but if you reach the way i look at this guys you should not invest in any kind of coin or token that doesn't at least meet three of these four categories okay so you could have a great target market great technology and a solid team but it might not have the adoption there or you might have uh you know uh, for example, I would say a uh, great target market uh, technology and growing adoption, but they're looking to expand on their team. That's fine. So there's there's different kind of ways you can analyze it, but definitely three out of a four um, of those categories, guys. It's extremely important to make sure that you've got that confidence backed in your coin and you know why you're wanting to buy it rather than just buying into hype. All right, step two, guys. Where's the price? This is a pretty important step, guys. We've got to make sure we know where the price is for a certain currency. So I'm gonna give you guys a good example on how to approach uh, general price action and really take a philosophy when you're investing in something. So for example, I've got one of my favorite coins here, Stratus. Uh, I've got a nice Bitrix chart laid out here. And this is a chart of Stratus when it was mooning like crazy. Now, I gotta ask you guys real quick, I mean, look at the pace of that thing. Look at the volume, the little bars that are under the candles on the chart. I mean, God, there's so much optimism going into this, guys. You think we should buy it? I mean, it looks good to me. I think we should get into it until, well, right afterwards it sold off all the way down to 100,000 Satoshis. See guys, if we would have bought in there and bought into that optimism, it's what's known as chasing the highs. And that's not a good thing or a good way to trade or invest in any sense. You're going to get burnt. You're going to lose. And the reason why is because there is a time-tested statement that we should follow rather than chasing the highs. And that is, as generic as it is, buy low, sell high. And I got to say, guys, in an early market such as cryptocurrencies, this is extremely true. Now, it's not always true. Sometimes a coin can sell off 80%, much like in a stock market where a stock could lose 80% of its value, and it will never go back up. That can happen sometimes, guys. But when you have nice, consistent coins that continue to uptrend, they have good tech, good team, um, and massive adoption, when you can get a 50% haircut, which we obviously, we saw more than a 50% haircut from its highs here, pretty much 75% down uh, from its highs, that is a good opportunity to buy, guys. And Stratus is actually, just ironically enough, it's, 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 it's exploding today. And it's one of the reasons I'm holding it. I, I like the coin. I believe in its tech. I believe in the team. And I believe that it's continued to be adopted. And look at that. You could have made from the bottom up from 100,000 Satoshis 100% return to where it is on that chart. But if you would have bought it at 400,000 Satoshis, you would be at a big loss or you'd be holding some heavy bags on your shoulders waiting for it to get back up. So... Remember, buy low, sell high. It's really simple, but it's really important. So reiterating again, don't chase the hype, guys. Um, and this is a Warren Buffett quote. I didn't type it out, and I don't mean to be generic, guys. But it, it is really serious. When you're investing in an early market like this, guys, you can have these simple philosophies and takes, and you will make a lot of money, guys. Be fearful when investors are greedy, and greedy when investors are fearful. Now, this is pretty much telling on the idea of like when people are getting out of their hand and prices are going too high, you might be in, you know, cryptocurrencies, you should be saying, okay, when's the time I can get out of this because people are getting a little carried away. And when, um, and when and greedy investors are getting fearful and things start to go down, that's when you should start getting greedy. Start getting greedy when the prices are cheaper. And that's a great way to approach it. So this is another thing that you should ask too with the price. Do you believe it's worth more? Honestly, that's a decent question. Do you believe at the price that it's at right now, if you're going to buy into it, do you think that it can go higher over the future? Do you think that it's, you know, do you think it's at a fair value right now? Or do you think that it's really undervalued and it's time to get in? So definitely take some of those points to home, guys. It's extremely important to be confident and say, yes, I'd be fine holding this for more than a year at this price because I think it's going to go up from here. So great way to look at it guys really test yourself would you be willing to hold it for a year that's a very important question so step three i've got a, a pretty cool picture here guys if you played uh, mass effect i had the uh, elusive man photo i thought that would fit really good but check for patterns check for ways that you could strategize on your purchases and uh, we're going to go into some really cool technical patterns that you guys might not know about uh, but will really help you spot price action and learn opportunities where you can buy uh, maybe cheaper or get in before something big happens so 
what technical patterns are we going to be covering? We're, we're going to be covering uh, a, a mixture of categories and uh, specific uh, technical trends. And it's in six major categories. We have wedges, triangles, bottoms and tops. We've got the bull flag, head and shoulders, and cup and handle. And these are very important, very basic ways to use technical analysis, guys. And I've got visual examples for all of you, so you're not gonna have to be bored by me just trying to sit here and visualize it like a philosopher. <laughs> so let's go ahead and look at some of these guys. Uh, so I've got a few examples up here. Uh, I got a few Bittrex charts. The first one I've got on the left to show you what a simple wedge is, is ants right there and this is a perfect example guys i actually got i printed some good money today uh over, or sorry, actually over the past two days on ant shares because of this wedge that i spotted where the price action basically has lower highs and higher lows and it slowly starts to coil in in a very very clean kind of sideways um triangle wedging in and coiling the price action and then what happens is it's either going to break up or it's going to break down there's really no telling until it gets above it and really has a, a decent part of the breakout and then you can get in and know okay this is a time to you know hold for the long term because this is where all the, the bulls their exuberance comes in and the price really gets propped up so however Wedges are really nice and they're pretty easy to spot. However, there's also things known as ascending wedges and descending wedges. So I've got an example for waves right here and it's not the best ascending wedge, but basically speaking, it's when you have uh, on the bottom, the, uh, the lows are um, rising, so they're going to a higher level. And then the highs um, of the candles are continuing to rise as well. However, it usually is moving at a slower pace than the lows are moving up, and it's showing that that resistance keeps hitting it. So this is a bearish um, technical uh, trend. So for those of you guys who don't know, I'm just going to explain real quick on a language basis. Bearish and bullish uh, mean how you're feeling on the certain market, uh, how you're feeling on the market at the moment. So if you're bullish, you're optimistic. You think things are going higher. You think things are undervalued right now, and you can see an uptrend coming soon. If you're bearish, you think. All right, cryptocurrency is way overvalued right now. I think they're going to go down. I think that they've been propped up too heavily on too little volume. I think it's time to sell. So that being said, an ascending wedge is a bearish. It is a bad uh, signal for price action. We can obviously see that waves sold off pretty heavily. And then we have on the bottom a descending wedge. Now this is green. This is a bullish. Uh, this is a bullish trend in price action where the wedge, is, or sorry, the uh, descending wedge is getting closer, and the uh, the peaks of so that the highs of the candles are getting much uh lower but at the same time that support level isn't decreasing as much but it's still at the same time is decreasing so what happens is it coils in the price and then pops up out of it as we saw with uh zcash so anyways guys there's uh that's that's a few good examples of wedges wedges are probably what you're going to be using more than anything however you guys also get to use triangles and there's a little bit of a difference here now you guys might say these look kind of similar they look kind of like the wedges well, there's a big difference between uh, the triangles and the wedges, and it's the revolves the, uh, the the roles are reversed. Sorry about that. That was a kind of a, kind of a tongue tongue twister right there. Uh, but basically, in the sense of an ascending triangle, what you're seeing is lows from a stock price continuing to uh, rise to higher levels, and then there uh, there's a consistent resistance level. So, for example, we saw a stratus here. Uh, which eventually will lead, hopefully, to a breakout as the price continues to find that steady support upwards and it keeps coiling against that, that resistance. So eventually it'll get to the peak, uh, usually the peak corner of it, and shoot upwards. Now, keep in mind, guys, it doesn't always work out that way, but usually, in a sense, ascending triangles are a bullish sign. Next up, we've got Bitcoin right here, and a perfect example of a descending triangle. So we have the base support line. Uh, at the uh, level we saw on Bitcoin, and it kept on finding support there. However, it kept on getting resisted at lower levels, showing that there's some negativity in the price action. So eventually, it got to the peak or, or the uh, end of the triangle, and it went through and it fell down to new lows around the 2000 area. So those are perfect examples of utilizing triangles um, in cryptocurrencies. Next up, guys, we've got double. Uh, we've got both bottoms and tops. And today, I'm going to be talking about double tops and double uh, double uh, double bottoms. <laughs> uh, and the thing is, guys, you can also see in multiple cases a triple bottom and a triple top as well. And they work the exact same way. It's just more price confirmation towards that trend. So, I'll show you a perfect example, guys. If you guys know about voxels, this is a VR cryptocurrency. Uh, voxels had a double top. 
at the same price level, a little above, a little bit above a, a three thousand satoshis, and it was a clear double top, guys. Um, and you can just see it right there. It instantly started selling off heavily, much like it did in the past. So, perfect example of it, guys. And in the case of a double bottom, you're going to see double bottoms a lot when you're looking for buy points, guys. These are this is a very common bullish sign, and it's when the price action uh, stops selling off at the same level and it it bottoms out at that same price level. So usually has kind of a hilling effect, hits the same area, and then it shoots up as we saw there with Digibyte. So perfect example of it, guys. And like I said, triple tops and triple bottoms work the exact same way. In fact, they're more like extra confirmation that that is either support or that's resistance. So keep that in mind. All right, guys. So next up, we've got a bull flag. This is a very common technical sign you'll see um, in normal traditional equities markets. But however, recently we had a really good example of an ICO, which is Omisgo that came out strong, came up with a strong candle, and then maintained the majority of its gains and then continued to rally. This is what is known as a bull flag. And a bull flag is a confirmation that, look, we had a great day. We're slowly maintaining some of it. We're, we're cutting back a little bit. We're being reasonable. We have to have a little bit of a pullback. It's healthy, but we're maintaining the majority of our gains and then we're gonna send to new highs. That's pretty much the philosophy behind a bull flag. Now, sometimes they can be a little bit rough, but it's usually where you have a big green candle and you have a little bit of selling off each and every day for about two to three days, let the market cool down, and the optimism rushes back in when prices are a little bit lower. All right, guys, head and shoulders. Now, I couldn't find a really good example just in my spare time when I was working on the, the uh, PowerPoint slide for this of a stock, or sorry, not stock, a cryptocurrency that showed a head and shoulders pattern. However, it works the exact same ways, guys. Um, in this case, we have a, a chart of the euro to the USD um, in comparisons on Forex exchanges. So we can see obviously with the head and shoulder pattern, it's much like literal, uh, literal head and shoulders. Uh, so you have the left shoulder of the price action that is found and maintains some support. It starts to go up towards the head, the peak of it, and then it comes back down and it looks like it's gonna try and uh, try to get up there again and try and test the highs. However, it curves back down and forms a head and shoulder. And this is a very bearish sign, guys. You do not want to invest in something that shows a head and shoulder. That is meaning long-term downtrends for quite some time and a decent correction coming to the price action. The last one we're going to be covering, guys, is a cup and handle. Now, I knew instantly when I was thinking about a cup and handle what to cover, guys. There was no more clear of a cup and handle in any history of cryptocurrency other than Bitcoin after its first major run up and its pullback. What we can see here, guys, is basically, it's what it is. It's a cup, so you see the, the cupping price where it, it goes from its peak, it goes down, and it cups back up to those highs, and then it has a slight pullback, almost kind of like a handle on a, a teacup. So this is an extremely bullish sign, guys. If you see this on a chart, it usually means optimism is coming back into that asset. So if you see this on a cryptocurrency, guys, or if we see this again with Bitcoin, that's a huge opportunity. So next up, step four, using the indicators, guys. As you can see on the back here, I've got a, a picture of Apple. I know <laughs> continuing to go back onto the stock market of things rather than cryptocurrencies, but it, everything applies the same, guys. You can see with the circles there, you can use that uh, these uh, technical indicators to really help you. And I'm gonna be covering about the basics that you need to know because quite frankly, you don't have to use any advanced technical indicators in these markets, guys. This uh, There's a lot of simple indicators that you can use that people use in traditional markets that can really just give you a massive advantage that even some basic investors and traders don't use in cryptocurrencies. So the three I'm going to be covering today, guys, are the simple moving averages, the MACD, and the Bollinger Bands. And these are really important for you to understand and use. And what's nice is you can use them on pretty much any charting application. I know Bittrex allows it. I know TradingView allows it. So lots of opportunities out there to use these guys. All right, so the first one is the simple moving average. Now, y'all know I'm, I'm very optimistic if you watch my channel about Ant Shares or Neo, and um, I, uh, I definitely wanted to use this as an example because it was so clear. So not only did we have the wedge on Ant Shares, but we also can use what's known as the simple moving average, and we see that it lines up perfectly on the chart. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, Nick, what is a simple moving average? Basically speaking, on this chart right now, we're looking at the daily chart. So this means each candle you see on here is a day's worth of price action, okay? So we're seeing a, a few weeks of price action here on this chart. 
And when you're viewing the daily chart like this, where each candle is a day, the simple moving average is going to take a numerical value you give it. In this sense, we used the 50 day. And it's going to take the last 50 days of closed price action, meaning what the price closed at each of the 50 days. And it averages it out, the simple moving average. And it produces this really nice smooth line that usually goes up so long as an asset or cryptocurrency's price goes up over time. Now, if things start to downturn, the moving average will follow slowly behind it. And you can use this for a lot of different numerical uh, values, guys. I prefer, if you're going to use it, use the 50-day, the 100-day, and the 200-day. And what's nice, too, is if you want to spot this uh, trends on the weekly, if you're thinking really long-term, uh, you can also just simply switch to the weekly chart, and it will adjust to the 50-week, the 100-week, and the 200-week. Now, those are really long time periods, especially for something so young as crypto, but maybe in the future you might use that for longer-term trends, or maybe for Bitcoin or one of the larger coins. So next up, guys, we've got the MACD. So as you can see, there's nothing specifically on the chart, but it's at the bottom. And the MACD is a really cool indicator to tell when bullish price action is on the horizon and when investors are starting to get positivity back into price. So we can see that there's a red and a white line on this case. Uh, the colors will vary for you guys, so you have to set them accordingly. Basically speaking, though, if you really want a simple definition, and I know I have to get through this pretty quick, um, the white line is, once it starts crossing the red line upwards, uh, pretty much passing the red line, it's shown as a sign of optimism and uh, it's definitely a bullish signal. Now, when the white line dips below the red line and it's peaked up kind of like it was back in July on the chart, that is not a good sign. That means selling action is most likely coming. So keep that in mind, guys. The MACD is very, very helpful. And the last thing I want to talk about is the Bollinger Bands. Now, what is the Bollinger Bands? And simplicity, and for the the sense of being simple by definition, it's basically the range of price action that um, should be a it should be at least a little more common. And if it steps outside the bands, you should know that the price action has probably been a little overextended. So, for example, we can look back uh, to back in June when. Ant shares was just skyrocketing, guys. You can just see the price action lifted up to incredible new highs at 500,000 Satoshis, uh, just a few days uh, being around 100,000 Satoshis. So a huge lift up in price. However, we could see that it stepped out of the Bollinger Bands and quickly corrected back inside the bands because it was too fast. It was too quick, too fast. So. And what we can also see too, is we can use this in less ridiculous price action. For example, we can see that the uh, candle, the first circle we have on the screen around uh, the red candle in July was where we found support through the bottom of the Bollinger Band. And we can also see we had resistance on the Bollinger Band on the other green candle where the wicks closed down, whereas it originally had been higher during the day. So we can definitely use it, guys, for price action, and it's a great way to tell when something's overextended or if something has been oversold. So, now that we've done all the technical stuff, guys, it's time to talk about step five, and this is forming price levels. Now, this is, guys, I can't tell you, it's, it's one of the last major steps, and it is, it is extremely important. It is the final piece to strategizing on your, excuse me, on your investment. So, Let's say, for example, guys, let's get funny here. Let's have a good time. Let's say we want to purchase uh, $10,000 of Dogecoin, okay? You know, a nice meme coin. If I, if I had to pick a meme coin, it'd probably be Dogecoin. Um, and uh, we can see that Dogecoin has had a really nice pullback. It's had more than a 50% pullback. Um, we're not buying at all-time highs. And hey, look at that. It's down at the 200-day, guys. A huge level of support for long-term pullbacks. So that's great. Everything is lining up, lining up here, guys. And I think, you know what? I'm going to be optimistic here. I think if we can get in at 60 sats or 60 satoshis, I think we can get this up to 120 and make a 100% return. I mean, it sounds ambitious, but look how quick it happened in the past. I think we could really get back up there again, and I don't think it would take too long. And I'm willing to make that investment and hold. I love the, you know, the technology and everything, whatever. So we've gone through all of our evaluation processes, and now we're here, and we've set a plan to buy at 60 sats. So basically speaking, we want to come in, uh, rather, rather than just thinking of the best case scenario of it going to 120 Satoshis, we want to have a plan for that shirt. I'm going to cover that. However, we want to have two plans because things can go both ways in markets. And a lot of cases, sometimes things don't go our way. So how does this look? 
I'm going to go ahead and go to this next slide. I zoomed in a little bit on the price action here, and we're going to talk about two different types of orders. There's what's known as a limit order and a stop limit order. So what is first and foremost a limit order? A limit order is what pretty much states in, in, in a verbal, kind of like a verbal contract. It says, I'm not going to be selling my Dogecoin until I reach 120 Satoshis per Dogecoin. All right, and that's the 100% return we were talking about, right? So that's a limit order. Now you can always cancel it. It's not set in stone. You're not signing a contract, you know, in that kind of sense. But it's pretty much telling to the market, look, I I'm listing this up for 120 Satoshis. I'll wait till the market sees it fit that that's the value and someone wants to buy my coins off of me. So that's a, a limit order and that's hopefully the case scenario we're hoping for however guys things don't always go our way in markets it's a fair assumption to make right off the bat and most of the cases uh this is going to be a very important step to li uh, limit losses and limit your risk profile so let's say as previously we were buying at 60 satoshis for our, each of our dogecoin well let's say for example we only want to at max lose 10 percent on this trade okay we have a, a potential to make a hundred percent return but at the same time we don't want to you know just keep holding it and then oh we're down 50 percent we're going to let it uh, limit our risk profile to 10 percent in losses and we can do that with a stop limit order so a stop limit order pretty much says when it reaches uh if my dogecoin reached this price it is going to automatically sell. Now guys, a lot of trading applications do not have stop limits set in. However, what you can do is you can set price alerts on your phone and actually go out and physically sell it once it reaches the price. So it works the same way. It might not be as quick and instant, but it's a good way to be disciplined guys and limit that risk profile because so many people don't do that and they get burnt and have to hold huge bags of coins that they don't want to hold and wait, hopefully like, God, I hope it goes up someday. <laughs> so you don't want to get caught in that spot, that spot guys. And if you make a 10 to percent loss let's say in this case scenario guys don't feel upset be satisfied knowing that hey i limited my risk to an area that i'm comfortable with and you know what i stayed disciplined and guys now that we've covered everything that is the last point i'm gonna like reiterate to you guys be disciplined guys i can't tell you let me tell you something real quick uh, now that i've gotten all that stuff out of the way the the jargon of all i want to talk about in this video guys i really want to talk on a philosophical level here you guys who are watching this video within a, a year or two from when it's coming out, I want to let you all know that you're in a market that is set to expand very far over a long period of time. You are early adopters, and you should be happy for that. I'm glad you're here on this channel. I'm glad you're here watching my videos, but I want to make sure that you guys don't get carried away. And the reason why is because just like in traditional markets, like stock markets, People get burnt when they think with emotion, when they chase highs, and they don't come in with strategy. I'll tell you, for example, I know a lot of people tell me they want to start trading rather than just simply investing. The reason I tell you guys to invest is because in any given market, whether it be Forex, which is trading uh, currencies, actual like, you know, US dollar to, you know, Canadian dollars to the Chinese yuan, whatever it may be, uh, just like stock markets as well, 90% of traders lose money. Let me repeat that. That is a fact that has been proven throughout history. Over, and that number is continuing to grow as well. 90% of traders lose their money. Okay? So when you're trading out there, guys, and you're not being disciplined and you're just tossing money at things, you're most likely going to be a part of that 90% and not the 10% who win. And if you are going to go out there and trade, guys, take this strategy, at least, you know, with a grain of salt and really try to, you know, Kind of form it into your own trading style we all have our own ways ways of approaching it guys and my way isn't the golden approach and it's not the gold standard however be disciplined in whatever you do guys make sure you come in with the strategy be that 10 percent whether you're doing trading or long-term investing come in with the strategy and come out on top with the returns that you will eventually get and deserve for your hard work and dedication and your discipline so guys I know I rambled on there for a few minutes, but I'm glad I got to cover all that. I've been meaning to do it for quite some time, but I'm happy you stayed with me and I'm happy you watched it and hopefully you gained some knowledge. So thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for continuing to stick around my channel for those of you who are uh, subscribers to my channel. If you guys haven't yet subscribed, I really would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. I drop a lot of great content on certain coins uh, that I, I, I cover, whether it be ICOs or coins that have been on the market for a while that are starting to trend. And I really like to get informa uh, information out to you guys. Not to mention, I also do live streams and a ton of other ways that I can interact with you guys. So 
I hope you guys joined the Data Dash family. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you got something you want me to cover, please leave a comment down below. If you got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them as well. But anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.